In this final task, I'll combine all the individual parameters into one layer representing the combination of all parameters. This will represent the acceptable area for helipad locations, and then I can run a clip algorithm on the airports to determine which airport meet all those criteria. So I'm going to open up the graphical modeler. I'll show you a different way to open the model here. I'm going to go to Processing, Graphical Modeler, and then I'll hit the Open button and select our helipad site selection model. This open model dialog will default to your My Data folder that was set as your in your preferences. So that's another way to open up your model. I'll expand this so we can see the whole thing. I can combine the water buffer, the county roads buffer, and the three mile ring around Corpus Christi using the intersect algorithm. This will compute the area of overlap between those three areas. So I'm going to go to the algorithms tab, expand QGIS Geo algorithms, expand vector overlay, and double click on intersection. The input layer is going to be the difference algorithm. Intersect layer is going to be a fixed distance buffer. I believe that we want the one for roads, and I think it'll be the second one. If not, we can adjust that later. And here we need more than two inputs to this intersect. So we're going to click this ellipsis button to open up the multiple selection window. And we're going to choose the third fixed distance buffer, which should be the water features. And click OK. We'll click OK on this and make sure it's picking up on the right inputs. So yeah, it's got the two distance buffers, one from water, one from roads, and then the difference algorithm. Finally, I'll clip the airports with the output of the intersect giving the final solution. So I'm going to double click on clip. The input layer is going to be the clipped from algorithm, which is the airports. Clip layer is going to be the intersection. And here we are going to name the output final solution. And I'll click OK. Let me expand this so we can see the whole thing. So there's our whole model. I'm going to click Save to save the model. And my model's complete, so I'm going to close it. I'm going to expand models, expand GST 102. I'm going to right click on this and choose Execute. It's a little bit bigger than the first time we ran it because we've got all these different inputs to it. So I'm going to fill out the parameters and run it. Roads is the input for roads, airports for airports, I want counties for counties, water for water features, city boundaries layer. The county name attribute is going to be county. The city boundaries attribute is going to be name. Roads attribute is going to be route type. I'm going to click the ellipsis button to choose the name of the final solution file. And you can choose save to a temporary file or save to file. I'll click that. And I'm going to go to my C drive where my lab data folder is. Go into the lab 5, lab 5 data, my data. And I'm going to call this final solution. So this will be the shape file that is the final solution of the analysis. This other output is the Nueces County boundary. I'll again save this to the same location and call it Nueces County dot shape. So now I've got my entire model fleshed out and I'll click run. And we'll watch all of the progress bars go by as different aspects of the model get completed. Okay, so there we go. We have our final solution added. Let's open up the attribute table for this. And that should be the, the correct solution, Cuddy Field. So there's one airport that meets all those criteria. So in this lab, you've been exposed to both site selection modeling and the use of the graphical modeler in building a workflow. Building the model is certainly time consuming, but the benefits are many, especially if this is a workflow you're going to have to perform many times. If I open up this model and choose Edit, notice that there is a button here for exporting the model as an image. This will create a graphic file like a JPEG that can be included in a report or a presentation. And this can help you explain the technical workflow to others. Another advantage of setting up an analysis in the graphical modeler is that if a client changed their mind on the distance from Corpus Christi, you could simply adjust that buffer distance in the model. 
and then rerun it to see how the solution changed. Without the model, you'd be starting from scratch in that scenario. This model can now be run against a similar set of data in a different site such as Seattle or Boston. If you were to run it against another set of data, some of the parameters of the extract by attribute would have to be edited. However, that's easily done and models allow you to streamline these big workflows. You essentially created a custom tool for determining helipad locations with these parameters that could be run anywhere.